The Roto Grinders Daily Fantasy Football Podcast is presented to you by Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Make sure you check them out this week. We got the 250K baller, $10 entry with a $25,000 first place prize pool. Their weekly Yahoo Cup still happening for NFL. Put a lineup in. It's a free roll every week. And if you hit the perfect lineup, you could win $1 million. And with NBA started, they have an NBA Yahoo Cup and some great tournaments this opening week. So check them out. It's Yahoo Sports Daily Fantasy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Gilcast. My name, the top. my name, my name is Davis Maddock. You can find me on Twitter at Davis Maddock. I'm here with my friends. I don't know if they're really my friends anymore. Sammy Reed and Nate Noling. I have I have some good and some bad news for you. Uh, Nate made money today. Sammy yeah, broke even. I yeah. uh, I didn't make money today. <laughs> I it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought I was gonna get wiped for a little bit. I didn't get wiped. It wasn't it wasn't like last week. But you know what? I didn't want to be the one to be the loser this week. Like I knew I knew one of us, I knew one of us was not going to win, and I was really hoping for the sake of the show that it was going to be Nate that was the loser for the third week in a row and that Sammy and I were just like, "Yeah, bleh, dude, it's an art, not yeah, a science." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh god. So my worst nightmare and I, I literally tweeted about this on Friday. I said, please God, don't make me play Latavius Murray and then explain why I did it on my podcast. But what I should have said is, please God, let me play Latavius Murray and explain why I did it on my podcast. So let's just start there. Let's let's literally let's just start with <laughs> Latavius Murray. Nate, I played Carry on Johnson over Latavius Murray. Carry on Johnson got two DraftKings points and then left with an injury in the first quarter. This is the toughest <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> Davis is legit. This is, this might be the most depressed I've ever seen you. Like, oh, dude, I just I need the listeners to know this. If the Dallas Cowboys had lost the Sunday night football game to the Eagles, you, there would not be a Gale cast this week. I it was just I'm out. I just was not – I was not going to subject myself to 45 minutes of like, oh, great, you lost money, and Patrick Mahomes' knee is dislocated, and the Cowboys lost, and you it, – it's just – it would have been too much. And, and you faded Latavius Murray. I, I Like, <laughs> I don't – we talked about it all week. We talked about it all week, and I just said, there's no other running backs. He's going to get all of the rushing. And only question was whether or not he was going to get the targets. And he did. He had 27 rushing attempts and six targets. And he, I mean, he, 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 he capitalized on the touchdown equity because he's a freaking monster. That's what he does. He's unlike Malcolm Brown in that he's like been proven talented at the NFL oh, level. That, that, is, that is Nate, really hurtful for you to say, Nate. Nate, you're just digging, dude, you're just digging the knife into my rib cage right now. <laughs> this is, this oh. is. Hey, Grob, this is Nate's show. I'm, I'm Nate, very, Nate, no, it's, you know what? Nate, Nate really deserves this because we take every chance that we can to just absolutely dump on him. Nate had, like, people were tweeting us, obviously, today about, like, what the show was going to be like, and I just told everyone, I was like, oh, Nate has the stone nuts. And so, I had it since, like, Friday, as soon as Kamara was out. It was the same team. I didn't move. Yeah. I, I thought this week made sense. I really wish that I could just go back to sleep and play Latavius and the Saints over Carry on Johnson and the Bears because I would I would have more money and I could afford I I could afford to hire someone to make fun of you for me so I wouldn't even have to do this podcast. <laughs> I'm tilted about Boyd. I'm I'm really tilted about Boyd. He he had like All right, well let's just let's go let's re, let's go back to the let's go back to the beginning. Did we all – we did not all play Jared Goff at quarterback. Uh, Sammy, you did not play Jared Goff at quarterback. Explain yourself. Um, okay, so I'm a fish. I mean, that I, I literally played the worst quarterback on the entire slate. I could have played Ryan Fitzpatrick or Mitch Trubisky or Daniel Jones or literally anybody. Taysom Hill. I could have played Taysom Hill. He scored more points than Matt Ryan. Um, I, I'm just beside myself with tilt because, yeah, I kind of like I, – I basically broke even in cash, 
Uh, but if I had just played anybody except Matt Ryan, um, I would have smashed because I was like right near the, the cash line. And basically last night I had Chase Edmonds in my lineup. I had Chase Edmonds and – Oh, that's Wilson, tough. Right? I mean, and, we all had Chase Edmonds in our lineups last night though. Yeah, yeah. But so my plan was – and we got the late night Schefter tweet. The, the plan was that if DJ ended up playing, then I was going to pivot to – uh, Latavius, and then I'd have to go down at quarterback, and it was either Goff or Ryan. I was just like, oh, Ryan, great. He's at home. He always smashes at home. He said the 300-yard bonus in literally every game this year. Like, I, I trust him more than Goff, and uh, I, I had no idea that that would be the pivotal play of my lineup. Like, if I had just played any good quarterback, including Goff, I would have smashed, and, and because I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, you you had just some run bad. I mean, when you lose because of a quarterback, you're a quarterback. Like, it's the worst. It's, it's it's not even like you made a bad play. It was, I don't know. I think Matt Ryan and Jared Goff to me, like going into this game, their projection was so close that it was. Yeah, they were they were a uh, what? Sammy, you asked me this morning, right? Yeah, they and were, I, they I was like, I was like, they're like a point apart. Yeah, and and I was already playing cup, and and something I like to do in cash is is maybe not. If it's close, just go with the other side of a stack so I have exposure on both sides of the game instead of putting too many eggs in one basket. And, you know, I thought Ryan was a fine play. He ended up getting hurt at the end of the fourth, which, you know, it wasn't quite carry on Johnson level, but if he just gets a couple more points or, like, gets a trash touchdown, like... I mean, the freaking Lions scored 30 points, dude. Do you think if carry on Johnson played that game, he might have gotten in on some of that? No, I mean, Jones had four Holiday games. played the whole game. He didn't get in on it. So oh, God, dude, this is so tilting. <laughs> so I that, cannot... that was my tilt. The rest of everything went great for me. Uh, but you guys I... were sharp and you played golf. And, and, and I did pivot to golf in some higher variance contests. I just used this lineup plus golf, which helped us in, like, our pentathlon. But, yeah, in, like, the majority of my cash, that was, that was, that was the big tilt among some other smaller tilts. So the choice for me at quarterback was Josh Allen or Jared Goff. Those were the two highest projected quarterbacks on Daily Roto. And with, Jer- with, um, with Josh Allen, I was basically just like, dude, I am not getting wenched. I'm not going to live in a situation where my quarterback is up 30 points. And uh, I'm just watching him hand off to Frank Gore because that would, that would put me in an infirmary about as fast as watching uh, on Johnson watch the game from the sidelines without his helmet. So for me, I, I, I just, I thought golf was the right play. I mean, I kind of thought about Kyler or Lamar a little bit earlier in the week, but it just, it just oh, didn't I wish really you make sense. Kyler. That would have been, <laughs> I wish you would have played. Kyler. Oh, if, I, you know, actually I would have just, it would have been a lot more fun to just be dead today. Like it would have been, it would, I could have just gone about my day after this carry on thing but the rest of my lineup in the early games was good. So I thought I had a chance going into the afternoon games. And then, and and then Cordero returned the touchdown, and you're like, my brand is lit. It's happening. Like, yeah. you had your moment. Like, I was, I was making money on the day until the second half of the, of the afternoon games. In, yeah. Until the Latavius Murray fade came to roost. But yeah. Latavius, well, didn't, he, it, his ownership wasn't enough to bury you. No, what just bar- I mean, what buried me was just all the other people that people rostered. Michael you know, Thomas, like, Allen Robinson, yeah. yeah just, what, I mean, what just him was was not playing Latavius. That's yeah. that's what it was. Like it, you obviously ran bad because Carrion got hurt early in that game, and I'm sure he would have, you know, put up. But I need, I do need to, I need to come clean. Like I think it would be very easy as a tout to be like, dude, I just ran bad. If Carrion gets ten points, I cash everything. No, no. So my decision to to. The decision to play carry on, I think, if you just looked at it from the outside, is fine. But the reason I made it is really stupid, which was just I didn't want to play a running back against the Bears defense. Like at the at the heart of it, I could say there's a hundred different reasons. I could say they projected within a half blah, 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 to do. But really, the reason why I didn't want to click on Latavius Murray and Cash was that they were playing the Bears at Soldier Field. And you know who thinks like that? Stone Cold Fish. Like stone cold idiot fish think like that, and I was a stone cold idiot fish, and I got punished for playing like a fish. And that's just that. I mean, uh, I'm not going to disagree with anything you've just said, but it is it is funny that you that you did decide to play running back against the the Vikings instead. That was like a yeah. I was going to say, why is that an easier match? Like, 
because their team total was way higher. Yeah. Their team total, their team total was like six points higher. They were at home. They're playing inside, like which has a correlation to higher scoring games. Yeah. I don't know. I literally don't even like pay attention to like who if is good at run defense because it's so if stupid. If you're gonna care about the defenses, then like Minnesota with like fully healthy is much more of a stout run defense than Chicago without Akeem Hicks, but. I mean, look, literally, this is all just dumb. It does, does, does not matter. It doesn't These matter two... either way. <sighs> yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's the thing, yeah, the we... thing about Latavius is there was literally no, like, there was literally no other running backs on the roster that were going to be. <laughs> I mean, Washington... The, Dwayne Washington and uh, Zach Zenner played even more than I thought they would, and Latavius still crushed. Zach... Zenner played every third down, basically. But yeah, like he played day, way more than I thought. New Orleans has been just a ball control offense since Breeze went out, where they they do run the ball a lot more than you'd think. Um, all their passes are short. Like it's yeah, know. they they use their running backs. Like they yeah. finished like first or second in like team running back PPR scoring in like five years in a row or something like that. And that's the thing is when they target, like when the team targets the running back, even if it's not AK, like they're still going to have to, they're not going to have a completely different game plan, you know? So I, that's where I think the difference is between like what we're seeing out of the Rams this year with their running back usage compared to like the saints. I felt so much better about throwing in Latavius than, I don't know. I'm not going to dig that in anymore. Not playing Latavius is off brand for you, Davis. It was off brand, and it like okay, we had carry on projected for thirteen point four points, and we had Latavius projected for thirteen point one. What a sane person would probably have done would it? I just would have split them. That's what a normal person would do. They were the same price. It would have taken it would have taken thirty seconds of effort in my life, and would have been something that I should have done, and I I didn't do it. What did you have carry ons? target share versus Latavius' target share, though? Because that's what put me on Latavius. Like, when I looked at Latavius compared to – there was two other guys in the range that I thought were in play, and that Jacobs. was Carrion and Jacobs. But uh, Latavius, I had him projected for like a 14 or 15% target share, and I was just like, I can't even expect Carrion yeah. and Jacobs to get above 10. Yeah, we had, we had Carrion for eight, but we have him for – Seventy-one yeah. percent market share of the Detroit Lions rushing touchdowns, which in this game was a good projection. Yeah. To me, it was just the target share that pushed it over the edge. I mean, clearly, I just like clearly you're right, and clearly, <laughs> carry on. it's just yeah, like we, we don't need to go over why let's see this was a good play. Like, but the other play that play. I was surprised. <laughs> let's get into other running. Everybody played Fournette because Fournette was like, yeah. For, it's just it's like literally if you didn't pl- if you didn't play Fournette, you're dumber than me. But who was your third running back? Because I played Cook. You guys didn't. I no. thought Chris Carson was a stone-cold lock. And honestly, Nate, it's I feel like it's off-brand for you to not have wanted to play Carson. Like, I feel like the choice you made with running backs was off-brand because Carson, I think he is second on this slate in running back touches to only uh, – uh, Leonard Fournette. He got he got twenty seven touches in this game. I think. Well, let's. I mean, let's let's talk about not just the running backs that we played because both you and I, Davis, played Carson. Uh, but Nate, talk a little bit about your construction because early, like early in the week, you said you were really set on everything, and you were very set that you were playing Dalvin Cook instead of paying up for your your oh, wide receiver yeah. core. What was your thought process behind that kind of holistic view of the slate? <laughs> Um, I mean, Cook is one of those guys who I think last week had like his low of the season in touches and just overall share of the offense. And when I looked at the Detroit game, I thought there was going to be a high scoring game. And I think Cook is just like, he is high scoring games to play the 5k running back in that game, right? He's up there with Fournette and McCaffrey in like share of the team's expected points. And I just... I don't know. Cook to me was a was a no brainer. Every time they get into the red zone, he's such a part of their offense. He's where it's just like if they're going to put up points, I I don't know. I wanted Cook, and so I wanted Cook. I wanted Fournette, and then it was just who was my Cook and Fournette were the top two, and then it was who was going to be my cheap one. And I did look at Carson as my third before the AK thing, but it was never going to be Carson over Cook. It was always going to be Cook and Fournette, and that's what I said. I think at one point in the week, I said. If the chalk construction leads people to play Cup over Cook, I feel really strong about this week. Which I, is which which ended up smashing for you. Um, yeah. 
And, and, and I went the standard way, right? I went with Cup as my high price wide receiver because I really, I really wanted shares of this particular game. You know, I, I just didn't want to like have a cash lineup without any Falcons or Rams. And I felt very good about having a key player on both sides. And it ended up just being really, really awful. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dalvin, Dalvin has 26.5% of his team's overall like expected points. And Fournette has 26.9. And then McCaffrey has 31. So, I mean, it's those three that are leading the league. And then Bell's right up there too. But I, I don't know. I just – those three guys are the guys who are just – those four with Bell are like the guys that I'm just going to jam in. And I think – Carson is Carson, but I, I don't know. I had some questions about Carson. And at 6'5", he was a fine third running back, but he wasn't – I wasn't going to play him over Cook. So, I guess the the decision you made – well, I, I don't actually even know. Who did you play at wide receiver to be able to get up to Cook? Uh, I went Boyd, Brown, and Hilton. And Colts three, defense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, Cook over Cook over Carson, I mean, I think we had them projected extremely close. And, I like, I'll be honest, like, I after watching that game, I feel like Cook – I feel like Carson ran really bad. I don't – like, he, he barely left the field. They had one other running back rush attempt, and it was to CJ Prosize. Rashad Penny got zero rushing attempts. Like, Chris Carson is – gets the same amount of work, like the same percentage of work for his team as Leonard Fournette. I, I don't feel bad about – like Carson ran bad. I don't feel bad about that play. Like the last time we all played Chris Carson, I was like, that was really stupid. He's fat. He fumbles. He sucks. And I don't feel that way about this play. Like I think, uh, I think he, he, he literally 20, just ran bad. He had 21 rushes and five targets. Like he, he, was, he was a fine play. That doesn't mean he was – a better play than like Dalvin, of course, but like I, he's, he was a good play and, and yeah. I stand by it. I mean, Dalvin still had, so Dalvin this week had 24.5% of his team's expected production. Carson had 19.2. I think it's just that in the red zone uh, where like you have Russ Wilson, you have Tyler Lockett, you have other people like that, where when Minnesota gets in the red zone, you're not going to see Kirk Cousins rushing the ball and where he runs the 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 Seahawks red zone offense gives me a GD headache and I think it's that's where so, Cook, it's that's so where bad Cook gets the that's where Cook gets a huge boost is his expected touchdown production is significantly higher than well and Adam game. Thielen got injured in the middle of this game and they always try and do weird stuff to Thielen and none of that happened in this game obviously yeah. Though though Ola B C Johnson getting back to back end zone targets, that was not something that I had. Uh, per, that's not something I had projected for this game. Uh, that's yeah. the thing. Carson wasn't a bad play. Carson wasn't a bad play at all. I think not playing Latavius was a mistake, but I don't think Carson was a mistake at all. Thanks, Nate. Really appreciate <laughs> well, uh, it. Let's let's talk about what that did to our receivers, Davis, because this was like the second inflection of tilt in my life. Um, See, I, 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 my, my receivers all smashed. Yeah, my, mine didn't. I played Cup, Hilton, and Galladay. What did you play? You played Brown. I played John Brown, T.Y. Hilton, and Robert Woods, who got tackled on the one. I, I think he scored. I, I, I do. I think, <laughs> the, I think the ball was in. Like, it, like, I think that if this is a situation where if the game was close, if the game if – if there was any doubt as to who was winning – The Rams would have challenged it. I think the Rams would have challenged it, and I think that uh, I would have cashed my contest today. But does, instead, it you, does it make you feel better to know that you're definitely wrong and that it was definitely not a touchdown? <laughs> It just makes me wish that uh, Robert Woods cared about my family and that he would have just tried to score. I was, the only, Robert... I was the only one who played Kenny Galladay, eh? Yep. Cardi, Cardi, lo- I mean, I haven't talked to Cardi. I don't know how he did today, but Cardi was telling me that he really wanted to play Kenny Galladay, that he thought he was a really good play. Well, uh, it was probably the most tilting thing besides Matt Ryan. I, can't, I literally, I literally cannot imagine having Kenny Galladay in cash Marvin and watching Jones. Marvin Jones score four touchdowns. But that's Honestly. the other thing. Marvin Jones is like number eleven, and Galladay's nineteen. Galladay's nineteen, and like, you can't tell. You can't yeah, tell. They're both skinny, and so every touchdown, I was like, "Is that Galladay? 
and every one was not Galladay. All four of them were Marvin freaking Jones Jr. Zero of them were Kenny Galladay. He got one catch for 21 yards. I needed him to score like six points, and, and it's lit. And instead, he just – dude, he disappeared. I thought he was hurt, but he's not. He, he just – he just mailed it in or something. I, I, I need to watch the all 22. I need to grind the film. I need to see what happened. It, it was, I mean, I think Galladay was fine. It was just the fact that Marvin Jones got what he got was tilting. Cause I had Galladay in some tournaments with Stafford and it was, I mean, it was tilting people who smashed today had the, had the Stafford and, and Jones stacks. I mean, it was just, well, yeah, but no but, people, people who smashed today had Aaron Rodgers naked. Or or, or they had him they had him stacked with Waller and uh, and Jacobs MBS. come, come and back. Yes, no. and just like okay, all right. So like every other part of this podcast is me saying how much of a giant donkey I am and how much money I lost. But Marquez Valdez Scantling's touchdown today that probably was the single most important play of my fantasy season, and I'm not even I'm not even kidding because I have him on all every dynasty team. Like my most owned player in best ball, have him in all these high stakes seasonal leagues. That touchdown, like on like the crazy mega bye week apocalypse with Godwin and CMC and everything, like it it was it it saved me from walking off a bridge today. Basically, is what I'm saying. Welcome to this week's Gilcast, everyone. Where Davis Maddox counts as seasonal <laughs> prowess. I needed I needed to get that off my chest. Uh, Sammy, Sammy, did you? Did you uh, – were you scared of fading Brown? I, I When I was like – I don't know. John Brown's not a normal cash play for me, but I just I, – I needed Brown because I was struggling between Brown and Boyd because I wanted Robinson, and I didn't get Robinson at all. Sammy, Sammy watched uh, the Cincinnati Bengals offense last week and said, I need, a, I need me a piece of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually uh, had my Boyd phase uh, back in college last week, and uh, I regret it, and I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> Uh, Robinson was the one I do regret because like in my column for Roto Grinders last week, I wrote him up and just touted him super hard. I had 44% of them in GPPs, but in cash, I was just like, dude, it's gotta be Galladay. Like the guy's a beast. And, uh, yeah, I wish I, I wish I'd gone with a Rob cause a Rob was a great play. I think he was like third in weighted opportunity on the season among all receivers coming into this game. Like it was a really good spot and a really good price. And, you know, he just – he was, like, the fourth guy I was going to use. But I had to get up to Cooper Cup. Like, nah, I'm just such a fish. That's such a fish. Such a bad decision. The Kenny middle. Galladay. Dude, how does Matt Stafford throw for 364 yards and four touchdowns and Kenny Galladay catches one pass? I mean, that's just – that's just so sick. It's so sick. It is It is a remarkable level of run bad, Sammy. It really is. Don't placate me. I'm tilted, bro. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not even trying to placate you. I'm just letting you know that sometimes we make bad plays on this program and they need to be berated. And other that times wasn't. You, that wasn't one of them. Yeah. Nobody like this isn't like, this isn't like when Nate played Jarvis Landry. Oh, I remember that. That was great. <laughs> yeah, that was last week. This, is, was... this isn't like when I played carry on Johnson over easy, <laughs> easy money Latavius. Honestly, Tyler Boyd feels a little bit like a Jarvis Landry play. I... Was... No, Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd is Jarvis Landry on a, a somehow worse team. I... That, that's actually really? a pretty good comparison. Uh, to answer your question, Nate, I was not scared of fading John Brown. I thought he was a good play. Um, kind of in the same sense that Davis was saying, I was just afraid that the Bills would smash Miami so hard. So hard. That if he didn't get a long touchdown pretty early, it might just not happen. And I knew that it could happen, but I didn't necessarily think, oh, yeah, this guy, like, I have to have him. I thought he was fine. Uh, but Allen Robinson was the guy at that price point that I liked the most that I regret not playing. I got to tilt this I, Tyler I, Boyd I thought he was a, a must-have. Tyler Boyd literally – I, I didn't realize how bad this was. Watching the game was tilting. He had 14 targets at a 5.3 A dot, and he only ended up catching 35% of them for five targets. Like, how do, you, how do you convert 30% of your targets at a 5 A dot? How He's is, not quite Michael Thomas, is he? How is that? What is, Andy, I mean, Andy Dalton, not Drew Brees. More, more at 11. Nate, Nate, you do, uh, you do not get to tilt anything. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna actually, call, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, call yeah, a foul Nate, yeah, nope, <laughs> nope, canceling that, canceling that. Yeah, you had too good of a day to be tilting anything. Yeah, uh, 
so we all we all agreed T.Y. Hilton was a lock. He was he should have been priced at like what Cooper Cup was priced at, and he was priced at fifty nine hundred. It was the yeah. easiest play of the week. Uh, John Brown, though, I I did think John Brown was a lock. Yeah, he was just a good like number one wide receiver against Miami. What was he fifty five hundred? That it just like I think worst case here he was getting eight and. But, like, the upside was, like, the Marquise Brown game, right? We're, like and, – and they do, like – they do some stuff with him where it's, like, okay, even Josh Allen can make this throw, and Josh Allen's horrible. Like, they do, like, the little screens and, like, uh, some of those flip passes and stuff. So, like, they yeah, – but, uh, but here's the thing. Josh, Josh Allen threw the ball 26 times, which I think, you know, was, was – probably around where you should have expected. And John Brown got six targets, like ended up catching a touchdown and that's great. And huge upside for him, huge upside. Um, But yeah, I didn't think he was like that target hog. I I thought other guys in this price range had like better target share numbers. Well, the guy that I was considering playing instead of him was cooks was cooks. That would have been, that would have been a bad play. That would have been a bad play over Brown because the reality is with Cooks is Cooks' target share is, is not going to be – Oh, like, Brandon Cooks is basically JoJo Natson now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Brandon, like dude, dude, Brandon Cooks does – like when they're doing the weekly game plan meetings, I don't even know if they invite Brandon Cooks like when the team's like getting their playbook and everything for the week. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure Brandon Cooks just hangs out with the punt return unit now. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, no. We'll definitely give you like one jet sweep this week though for sure. No, Brandon, for sure. I got you. I got your back, bro. <laughs> To, to fade the number one wide receiver, like the clear number one wide receiver on the team with the highest total of the week for a potential third or fourth like gadget player on the ring. Oh, like the like the ninth, like for like Tavon Austin, basically? No, Tavon Austin scores touchdowns. Tavon I mean, Austin scores, you're right. Tavon Austin uh, probably has more yards on the year than Brandon Cooks. I need to look that up officially, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> Like literally, Cooks this year. I mean, now with Everett. I mean, yeah, you have Cup, you have Woods. You have we got Cup. we got Everett getting touches. We got Higby getting snaps. We got Henderson getting snaps. Dude, Cooks does not exist. Yeah, you can't project Cooks for more than like a sixteen, fifteen percent. More than three. like t- two yards, probably. And and if I'm gonna be honest with you, Davis, uh, I I don't I don't know that Robert Woods was the best play either. He wasn't. And Cat, no, he was fine. I hate to throw no. sand on, your, on the grave you've digging yeah. for yourself, but uh. Yeah, that, that wasn't it, Chief. There were so many. Any one of them could point. have gone off. Any one of them could have gone off from the Rams. Like, it could have been Cup. It could have been Cooks. It could have been. But to play one of them in cash, you have to say, like, I, I carve out this guy's role on this team. I mean, he was cheap, though. He, he and Cooper Cup got the same target volume, and Robert Woods was two, 1600 cheaper. Here were the guys that were around Robert Woods. T.Y. Hilton. Kenny Galladay, Tyler Board, Tyler Boyd, Allen Robinson, and John Brown. Like those are all clear number one guys on their team. And yeah, you- so I played I played two of those guys, and then I played another one of those guys in a way, way, way better game environment. I, I totally get all the reasons why Allen Robinson would be a play. You just if you're doing projections, you cannot you can't make those guys project for the same amount of points. Uh, like you, I, I, like, I don't run my own projections, but I fail to see how I, like, Actually, I, I do my own projections, and I can very clearly tell you that when Allen Robinson is projected for 26% of the targets and Woods is barely projected for above 20, it's a very easy thing to make sure that Allen Robinson... All right, what do, you have, what, do you have, what do you have Robinson market share targets at? For today's projection, I had him at 25.6% target share, and Woods I had for 202 Okay, so we have exactly 20.2. We have the same number as you. We got him yeah. for 15.59. We have Allen Robinson for 13.11 with 25.2. If I move it to 26, it's yeah, it's still it's still Woods. Cuz we have Woods, we have Woods way better yards per target cuz of the matchup. Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm not going to factor in a matchup of that one of it. Honestly, highly, if you want to Honestly, the the play I wanted to make was way worse, and I'm so glad I didn't do it. But I almost just straight up played uh, shark over over woods. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Davis sent us a text on like Thursday afternoon. He's like, guys, I think I'm gonna play shark and cash. I still think shark would have been a better play than woods. Shark would have not been a better. I would have been very bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one, <laughs> Nate. That would have been stone cold stupid. 
<laughs> no, sure. I think Shark like, would have been a like not something that like just because something that. happens for six games does not mean that it's like going to happen for the next six games. Like just because Cooper Cup has been Calvin Johnson for six games does not mean that that's going to be the way that the Rams distribute targets over the next ten games. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Do you, do you weight the most recent games more? Uh, I do. Yeah, I have a slide where it's like the 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 three most recent games. I th- I think I weigh more than the rest. But yeah, so Dark. so I I might be misspeaking here, but I remember Frisco Josh, uh, the proprietor of Air Yards. I think it was last year or the year before. I want to say he said something to the effect of like, I only look back at like the last four games and anything beyond that, like it just starts getting really messy. But if you start looking at just like rolling four game averages, that is more accurate than full season averages. I don't know if the number is four, but yeah, Josh, he did say that. And he says that uh, he, a part of the air yards by low model is like some sort of cyclical production that he has an algorithm for. But I mean, literally two games ago, I mean, in week five, DJ Shark had 175 air yards. I mean, he's still getting – and it's not just like we're, we're overblowing week one or two. Okay, well, like literally like two weeks ago, Robert Woods had 17 targets in a game where Jared Goff had 68 dropbacks. Yeah, well, so, how, many, uh, how, many, how many catches did he have last week? <laughs> zero wrecks per the data. <laughs> this, is, this is two weeks in a row you've played yeah. Robert Woods and Cash Davis, and he has a total of five receptions. <laughs> yeah. I really hope – who do the Rams play next week? <laughs> I really – I've made this Robert Woods. Oh, no, dude. Dude, they play the Bengals. <laughs> Robert Woods, we're going streaking. Davis, Three weeks in a row for Davis. It's lit. I've made this Robert Woods case to you a thousand times. I'm not even going to do it again. You know what's crazy is that Nate was like the original like Robert Woods truther. Yes, because the volume showed it. Now it doesn't. I'm not going to get stuck on something that happened years ago when he is not the same guy. Oh, thank God. Okay. It does. He's expensive next week anyways. Okay. We're going to, it's good. We're fine. Dude, please play him. Please. I, I might play him yeah. in his 45 whopper. I mean, he's like his <laughs> 40th in the year. Like this is Davis. He is not who you think he is. He's 58th in the league in whopper right now. Where the guy that you're just ripping on DJ shark is like 20. I was not ripping on him. I love DJ Shark. It's just like, dude, there are a lot of people who are a lot better than me at math and and like life and having money that project <laughs> that project Robert Woods for a lot of fantasy points. Okay, well, he's got a twenty percent target share on the year, so keep jamming him in there like he's like he's a. 20. Well, okay, so here the Rams have a twenty nine total. He's got a twenty percent target share. He's got. Eight yards per target. Like where? Like where is this? Like te- like where is this a bad play? His A dot is way down. His A dot is down at eight point four this year. He's getting twenty percent of his team's air yards and twenty percent of his team's target share for a whopper of forty five point nine two. Guys, hey, you guys, have- you guys. I, I just want to point out that the conversation you're having sucks. And I'm looking at the uh, people who finished above me in this like twenty five dollar double up. And they all played good players instead of bad players. No, they played. Who was who was third in that twenty five dollar double up? Dude, this this guy played Corey Davis. He played Calvin Ridley, and he played Dar- Dawson Knox, and he scored thirty more points than I did. Yeah, dude, because he's just sharp. Like, imagine not being sharp enough to play Dawson Darson Knox. Knox. Three daughter dad is his name. If you're listening to this, like, you're just a god. Like, keep having children. I, I just I I don't understand. Like, I just all right. So. We gotta get we gotta get to where I really lost this slate. Like carry, I actually think I w- I I would have survived carry on versus Latavius had this next one v one not happened. Um, so in a in in your projections, Nate, what did you have projected for Mark Andrews, and what did you have projected for Darren Waller? Uh, I mean, they were similar. I think for Andrews, I had like twenty four percent target share. Waller, I had twenty five percent. Um, I had him like within a half a point on, uh, yeah, I have, I have Waller for 15.8 and I have Andrews for 15.4. I played Andrews because I just always want a little bit of exposure to Lamar Jackson. Cause he's awesome. Yeah, and Andrews uh, makes sense. He's a higher a dot guy. He had more, air, he was projected for more air yards. Andrews wasn't a bad play. Waller. He had Nate. Uh, I, and I really mean this. 
he had the worst game of professional football I have ever seen. He was. Oh, you, you watched the game, which was a huge mistake. Huge mistake. He he was the worst player I've ever seen. So, for I mean, just let's just get it out of the way. He had a touchdown, right? It's in his hands. It's he's going down to the ground with it. He's in the end zone, and he just decides when he gets to the ground, like, nah, bro, this ain't it, Chief. I don't actually want to score this touchdown. And that was I actually I actually turned the TV off then. That was it for me for the day. I, when, when, when that touched out, I just was like, I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta take some deep breaths. I gotta move. I gotta, I gotta exit the room. Cause I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. Uh, I'm assuming that you did not have any reactions like that as Darren Waller was catching touchdowns for Mike freaking Glennon in freaking garbage time. Nate, Dude, I'm Waller, so mad. Waller was, Waller was tripped up on like the seven yard line too. He could have had another TD. No, it's like, like there really is a conspiracy. Like I like, <laughs> like, he had not scored until now, and Foster Moreau scored before either of his touchdowns today. Oh, uh, when he got cucked by Moreau, I was yeah. tilting my face off because I, I had a ton of them in GPPs. I didn't play them in cash, but here's the thing, that, that Davis. Really I want to rip you a new one, but like the Waller Andrews thing. If anything, Andrews is like the buy low. Like here, he's the guy who he's he's got 55 targets, um, and he's. He's he's caught sixty five percent of them. Where I mean, he's the number one receiver on his team, but also the same is true for Waller. Yeah, he had eight of eight of twenty. Lamar Jackson only had twenty pass attempts. Yeah, and here's the thing: Andrews has more air yards. Andrew has more targets. He has uh, the only thing that Waller has is just much higher efficiency numbers. Waller's caught eighty eight percent of his targets, and his catch percentage based on his like. Nate, my family can't eat Whopper. I'm just saying Waller's like 18 percentage above 18. His catch percentage is 18 percent above what it should be based on where he's been targeted. Where where Andrews is at zero. So like dude, Waller's going to regress. He is not. He gonna was to catch 88 percent of his passes. Dude, Andrews he, he was gacked. so bad. Andrews gacked like three passes in a row. Including horrible, that touchdown. horrible, so and bad. It, and at one point, the announcer just exclaims, and Andrews drops another one. That's three in a row. And I'm like, dude, if Navis, Davis is listening to this with the sound on, he is literally dousing himself in gasoline. So, like, my girlfriend Andrews and her friends were in the yards. next room, and I, like, I like chucked my phone against the wall, and I'm just, like, you know, just, just one of those. And they were like, dude, are, like, are you okay? Like, are you? And I just – I was like, no, I'm not. Like, this is – like – Mark Andrews dropping that touchdown, I'll never forget it. Mark Andrews plays with my favorite quarterback, went to my favorite college, is a guy I love. Dude, he is on he is on my shit list for like a long time after wait, today. Wait a second, dude, you gotta set the scene. So what's going on? You're locked in your room while your girlfriend while you're in girlfriend another off. room and you're watching on your phone? <laughs> no, I'm in the living I'm in the I'm in the living room and my girlfriend and her friends are like out on the patio, like drinking or whatever. Dude, you're just you're just you're just hanging out, living the dream. This is your Sunday. Most Sundays. Nice. That's great. Well, except it's not living the dream when you like are like, oh, I just threw my uh, eighteen hundred dollar iPhone Max Pro that I bought when I used to be good at DFS, and now I gotta go. I threw it, and that was irresponsible. And now I gotta go see if it works because if it's broken, I probably can't afford to have it fixed because Mark Andrews can't catch a freaking touchdown. This tail is gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i gotta say the last two weeks davis you know your tilt was like oh yeah this sucks i'm tilted you are genuinely tilted this week this is- oh no i'm like this is like this is not an act this is not me being a character on a podcast i'm real life angry dude and i was saving i really wanted to save it for mark andrews too because uh-huh. if like he's listening or if anyone who knows him is listening or if anyone wants to pass it off to him i like you owe me money dude <laughs> I haven't seen Davis this tilted in years, like years. Dude, because it's not fair. I lose, I lose these 1v1s by 30 points. Like, oh, okay, carry on Johnson versus Latavius Murray. Let's lose that by 30. And then if you didn't want to lose that one by 30, let's lose Waller versus Andrews by 30 also. Like, that's tight. Need to need to stop looking at those projections. Uh, you need to start looking at them a little less, bro. It's 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 more of an art than it is a science. Like you need to get back. The proje- to- Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. The projections, the projections had Waller over Andrews, and I was like, dude, it's an art. I'm taking Mark Andrews, bro. Oh uh, no, no, you gotta you gotta start following the projections. You gotta start looking at those projections, Davis. <laughs> 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 
So, <laughs> Sammy, build an optimal lineup, Davis. <laughs> Sammy, who did you play at tight end? Uh, so this is the third phase of my tilt, and I played Hunter Henry, who is obviously just a fine play. Um, no, no, you you actually like you should take a you should take a bow on this because every optimizer except for Cardi's said that this was horrible. Dude, I, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, there's no bow to be taken. He was fine. He was 4K. He was underpriced. The good receiver. Um, I mean, what, you know who he scored more fantasy slot. points then? They, they basically kicked like Keenan Allen out of doing like the short slot stuff because Hunter Henry does it now. Like you got to grind the film to know that, but like Hunter Henry's good, and he finished three yards short of the bonus, which would have been worth a decent amount of money to me. And the the Chargers are just such egregious idiots that they could. They not- are the Chargers are the biggest gang of dumb shits that have ever existed in professional football. <laughs> they they're just a team of smegma. Like I hate the <laughs> Chargers. They're so Ugh. so bad and they do such stupid things and all he needed he needed like one catch in the last 4 minutes and they couldn't get it, you know, like they're I mean, can, can, to like, Eckler and they're not getting touchdowns and How like, insanely oh, bad they're, they're, was them running back to back on those goal line possessions? Like like is that the dumbest worse. There's no there, worse. <laughs> they had like, 22 seconds left and no timeouts, and they're like, "We're gonna run this quick we're shot." Run it twice. <laughs> to Melvin Gordon, <laughs> whose idea was this? Who did this? I, Who's this it's because their head coach is a running back, dude. Like that's how bad running backs are. Like they can't even coach. That's how bad. Dude, is Eckler just a legitimate receiver now? Like he just he has no. They so here's what they do. They six, play six receptions they play, for 112. They play Melvin Gordon until they have to try and score points, and then they sub Melvin Gordon out, and they run all the Eckler plays, and then they score a bunch of points. Like it's it's actually perfect for Rivers's point shaving because it means that he's always getting the ball back down one score with like two minutes left, and and then boom, like it's it's just perfect. It's exactly what it's exactly what Rivers needs to continue, you know, whatever kind of operation he has going. Dude, it, 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 Melvin Gordon is a disease. <laughs> Melvin Gordon is, is, and I really mean this, he is the worst running back in the NFL. Dude, he is fat and slow. He's got no juice. He's got no oh. – dude, I bet there are definitely some people out there that, like, thought they were sharp playing him this week too. Like, I know that there were people who were like, ooh, I'm going to boost him in the optimizer. I'm going to get, like, 15% Melvin Gordon, bro. They're going to ram over the crappy Titans, and he's going to get two touchdowns and, like – I just, I really hope those people enjoy that one yard touchdown that the team, like, that's a once in a lifetime play that the Chargers ran. That's, that play is never going to work again. And they wasted it in a regular season loss against the Tennessee Titans. I mean, here, here's the thing. Remember, remember when Zeke was holding out and we heard all the stories about him working out in Cabo and like Le'Veon Bell was holding out and they're like, yeah, he's working out and he's rapping. What did you hear about Melvin Gordon when he was holding out? Nothing. Because I, heard, I, saw, saw, I saw the dude on Twitter all the time. He was literally just always on Twitter. Dude, he was on his couch eating cheesy poofs and tweeting. And now he's back in the NFL fumbling and screwing up my freaking program. <laughs> Did you say cheesy poofs? Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheesy yeah. poofs. <laughs> oh, Sammy. Um, yeah, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's not good. Whatever. Screw, screw that guy. I didn't think Hunter Henry was as bad as Davis was making it seem. No, I, I no, no. I don't. I don't think he's bad at all. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying that the projections and optimizers around the industry. The only one who was high on him was Cardi. I mean, I was high on him. I just had Waller and Andrews as better plays. Yeah, and the, you know, it's it, it kind of like fit the way I wanted to do my lineup, and I liked Henry, and I thought he was a good value, and you know, it's a, it's an art, bro. It's an art. Yeah, Sammy outscored Davis though, right? Sammy, what did you end up with? Oh yeah, oh yeah, like one twenty eight. Oh yeah, right. Davis, how'd you do? One twenty two. And those and those points were big. Like the cash line was right there, you know. So, so yeah, sorry, dude. I'm sorry about the Andrews. I really am. I want to give you a hug. Like that was really awful what happened there in that game. Really I mean, I guess I guess I run good. My phone didn't break when I chucked it across the room. Yeah, that's some run. That's some run pure. My dog was pretty pissed though. <laughs> she was not a ha- she was not a happy camper today. She was like, "Dude, what's your what's your freaking problem? Why? Come on, <laughs> take me on a walk." 
Yeah. Uh, defenses. So this is another thing that oh, I messed boy, up. Yeah, yeah, we got to talk I, about this. When I realized that I wasn't playing Latavius, I was like, well, I probably shouldn't play the Saints defense and I should probably play the Bears defense because I thought those were the two defenses at 3K and 2.9K. I thought they were the two best. And, uh, you know, I just really I, – and this is on me. I just didn't account for the Trubisky. He is – I mean, He's there are 32 terrible. starting quarterbacks in the NFL – is there is there a starting quarterback worse than Mitch Trubisky? No, trade I don't for know. Fitz, trade for Fitzpatrick, please. Uh, Ryan Pace. I mean, I, I'm I am so done with Trubisky. It's Tr- Trubisky has always been the next carnation of Blake Bortles. I, I think he was compared to Bortles when he was drafted. It was like these these project quarterbacks that are getting taken like at the top of the draft, and it's like, oh, this guy's got a lot to learn, and but he's got good mobility and arm strength, and it's like, no. He doesn't know how to play quarterback. He's awful. And he's like quarterback number 35 out of 32 starters. He's really awful. And it's amazing that Allen Robinson succeeds in spite of this man. It's amazing that Allen Robinson has never had a real quarterback and has still done what he's done. If Allen Robinson had half a decent quarterback, literally Allen Robinson would be like priced to 8K every week. Correct. He's a freaking stud. That is correct. Why, why did you not play the Colts, Davis? Yeah, the Colts were 2K. The Colts were what allowed you to get to everybody. Why, why'd you spend an extra $1,000 on a defense in that game? Because I didn't need it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need, didn't need the 1000 <laughs> not couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get to Cooper Cup with my team. <laughs> and I didn't want to play Tyler Lockett. Got got to jam in Woods and... Got to jam Got to jam in that 20% target share. Oh, dude, Woods was fine. <laughs> he was fine. He got 13. He almost scored. <laughs> He's tackled on the one, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, at least, you, at least you didn't play Evan Ingram, you know? At least. Oh, know. dude, okay. So we do, I mean, the people do want us to talk about this. I mean, the flow chart, just, okay, let's rewind a little bit. Daniel Jones sucks. He <laughs> sucks, bro. Everyone who said he sucks was right. Daniel Jones does not have it, bro. Like, he looked good for a half. A half. That's it. That ain't it, Chief. I'll take Sam Darnold over Daniel Jones all day. We, we don't get to call him Dimes anymore, right? That's, that's No, gone. Danny Dimes, that's gone. That's gone. That man is... <laughs> Okay, that felt good. That felt good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, for, for sure. I mean, we can talk about some other things. Like, there were – what was Evan Ingram? Well, no, hold on. We got we to gotta tell the one last anecdote about the day, which was that oh, I'm yeah. literally complaining in our group chat, like, the Bears defense, I can't believe I did this. The Saints are going to steamroll, yada, yada. And then, boom, my boy, my Eskimo brother – Quarter L. Patterson, 102, uh, 102 yard kickoff return touchdown. And I'm like, that's it. I'm saved. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wasn't saved, obviously, because the Bears defense sucks and Chris Carson can't score touchdowns. But that was, it was a, a moment of joy and hope in yeah, an otherwise he bleak day. He literally, literally saved, saved me. me. And it was two seconds before you're tilting playing the Bears. It was, it was, the timing of it was impeccable. It was gold. So that's Davis, that. why didn't you play the – like, I, the Colts seems perfect in cast for me. Nate, I didn't need the salary, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just I – didn't, I didn't need it. <laughs> should have just played – I should have just played Cole Beasley in the Bills defense. <laughs> Bills defense, by the way, I have never in my life seen a bigger bailout for people who spent four – four thousand three hundred dollars on the defense did you guys see how they got their touchdown no oh my i mean dude this is like if you were playing against this in a head-to-head you would have lost your mind so the the dolphins score and they go to go for the onside kick and because they're the dolphins it's the worst onside kick you've ever seen it doesn't even go three yards but it's straight up in the air and the bills guy just catches it and basically walks into the end zone on the onside kick like he's like i don't even know if the dude like broke a sweat 
running from the onside kick. On like oh, that no, kick bro, I didn't even see that happen. Oh, my God, what a bailout. Yeah, I saw that. It was tilting. It was, it was a there huge bailout. Yeah. yeah. Well, if uh, it, so, so here's the thing. If you spent $4,300 on the Bills defense in cash, you're a fish. If you played Evan Ingram in cash and spent $6,500 on a tight end, when there was good ones in the four thousands, you're a fish. I, I got a I got a fifty dollar head to head against a guy who played Evan Ingram and Austin Hooper, and I lost to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> two, two tight ends, got to do it, <laughs> dude. Evan Ingram and uh, like two guys who weren't even in play. He played two tight ends that weren't even in play. <laughs> Uh, At least it wasn't Dart Dawson Knox. Dude, he played Latavius, though, so that's all you needed. <laughs> Just all you had to do. He was sharp enough to play Latavius. He played two tight ends in that. <laughs> and he was so sharp enough to play Latavius. <laughs> he's, he's probably going to send you an invite, is the thing. Oh, he did. He sent me a showdown invite. <laughs> 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 Davis Maddock didn't play Latavius this fish. I'm gonna no! send him. He's no! bum hunting you. He's bum hunting you. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, if I lose again next week, that's it. This podcast is done. <laughs> like I can't do this again. Nate, Nate, who are we gonna get instead of Davis? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> this They're is good. Again next week, Davis. Davis, you're you're gonna be in your head next week now. Are there good plays next week? <laughs> if there are, yeah. I'm sure you'll make you them. won't. You'll find reasons not to. How did you uh, not take the slam dunk to Ladavis? <laughs> it's because, dude, I'm not, not even going to name names, but obviously in the other chat that I'm in, a guy who plays a lot more money than me but played carry on over Latavius, and I just tailed that. <laughs> I'm not, I've never seen it's Davis go through. The, Saint, the Saints play Arizona next week. I probably won't fade Latavius there. I mean, well, Camaro will probably be Camaro back. Will probably be back yeah. Dude, a high ankle sprain? I don't know. High ankle sprains are not. I don't think yeah. it was a high ankle sprain. That's what they said. If it was, then yeah, we're going to get a couple weeks of Latavius. What? Do, okay, this is so. This is mega mind interesting. David Johnson is 6,400, and Chase Edmonds is 6,200. No. I mean, we should talk about this David Johnson thing. How tilting is it that the Cardinals? I mean, no, dude, it's fine. It's like I only had like 40% exposure to David Johnson in tournaments. Like, it's fine. It's like it's, it's like totally fine that the Cardinals would just be like, uh, you know, like the NFL is like – you know, they're trying to get involved in legalized sports gambling, and there's, like, a real thing with, like, integrity fees. So, like, it's fine that there was no reporting that this was going to be a thing at all. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I feel I feel uh, pretty pretty bad about those David Johnson GPP shares, especially when yeah. I had this fat galaxy brain moment where I was like, dude, he is such a good play because nobody's going to play him. And uh, it was like You know that. who was actually a good GPP play because no one was going to play him? Yeah, Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds. <laughs> That's what we should have done. Wait, hold on. Do you want to, You guys want a mega galaxy brain here? I started Chase Edmonds in a league today, and I'm going to lose that matchup. Wow. Congrats. Do they have Marvin impressive. Jones or something? I don't That's even like know, legitimately man. Legitimately impressive. I started, I started four Chiefs in that lineup, so they all combined for about six fantasy points. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> what can you do? Uh... I don't know, man. Like, I just I, – whatever dude. whatever the bad play is next week that, like, is very clearly bad, I'm probably just going to be all over that. <laughs> hey, let's let, – why don't you talk about for a minute how good it feels to put up – what would you put up, like 202 in cash? Yeah, 202. Yeah, well, no I mean, big deal. Re- you, the reason it felt cash, good is – Yeah, the last couple weeks have been rough. Yeah. You made a bunch of good decisions, dude. Like, you, uh, you, you just did sharp things. And it wasn't just the player valuation – it was that you thought that you saw the correct way to build lineups and you went that route where it wasn't really chalky, but you still played a bunch of good players. How does that feel? That's what feels good. Last week I got in my head. There this is my plays. absolute nightmare. There were some plays last week when I made that I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> this week I was like, okay, wipe it from the memory. And I, by like Thursday, Friday, I was like, this is what I'm doing. And I didn't change, didn't let anything get me off. And I was just confident and yeah, it felt good. 
probably going to play Robert Foster and Cash next week. <laughs> oh, we actually should talk about this. I think some people still played Lazard. Oh, been really bad. Some no, no, I know, I know, some people did. I know for here's a fact why, some people still played here's him. The problem, I think, whenever there's a three K guy like that, people build these lineups with them, and then they can't get themselves mentally off of it because a three K guy who makes the rest of their lineup work, they're not able to evaluate the downside of that, and then they just get stuck on these lineups. That's why I think building lineups early sometimes can be just the death, the death of your decision making. That's, that's what, about all, like what about if all you had to do was just swap off of one $5,100 running back to a different $5,100 <laughs> running back? <laughs> Davis, your hair is, has become more and more frazzled. Davis, It's because I'm hair. so mad. <laughs> you, you, look, <laughs> like you look like a lion in a zoo right now. <laughs> like you're just disheveled and hair everywhere. And we, sh- we should sell this video. People are clamoring for it. If you PayPal me $5, <laughs> I will send you this video. <laughs> Whoever it is, if you if you made it to the end of this podcast, if you PayPal me $5, I'll send this to you. <laughs> Davis has resorted to prostituting himself. <laughs> it's either back, back to the blood bank again. <laughs> Dude, they won't have me back. <laughs> I'm maxed. I'm maxed out at the blood bank, bro. I'm five foot five. They won't take me at the sperm bank. <laughs> I'm dying. That was the best life you've ever said. <laughs> that might be Davis's like crowning, crowning line. I'm five five. They won't take me. <laughs> We should just end the podcast on that. I need I need people to know. And bad at DFS. We've got a file for you. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. No more. No more. No moss. That's it. We'll uh, we'll be back next week. I hope I hope to be in a much better mood next week. <laughs>